Hello, let's continue the special function series. In the episode 2, we did the integer case, and in the episode 3, we did the half integer case. Today, we will deal with the non integer and the non half integer case. So let's get started. Here is the definition of gamma function. Record the result we derived for the integer and the half integer case. I put the links under this video so you can watch them. For the real number case, we don't have such a beautiful closed form like in the integer or half integer case. And we write the factorial in this way. Note here, if we compare this equation with the integer case, it seems we simply replace the integer n with the real number z. But the logic is very different. Let's see the integer case first. For the integer case, we take the definition of the gamma function. Then we set z equals n plus 1. So we got this integral with the integer power. After calculating this integral, it equals n factorial. But for the real number case, we use gamma function to define the z factorial. To make it clear, I write it in this way. Actually, we use a gamma function to extend the integer factorial to the real number factorial. I hope this clarifies the subtleties. Let's see an example. Suppose we want to compute 1.7 factorial. There are two ways to do it. For method 1, we directly use the definition and plug in z equals 1.7. After taking the numerical integration, we got this result at 5 decimal places. For method 2, again we use the definition. Record the property 1 we derived in episode 1. You can click the link under this video to watch it. After using the property 1, we got here. Next, we write the gamma 1.7 in this way. Then we use the property 1 again. To compute gamma 0.7, we have to plug into this integral. After taking the numerical integration, we got the same result. It seems method 2 is more time consuming than method 1. But we can generalize method 2 to get this formula. This formula means, no matter how large for a real number z, we can always reduce it into a number between 0 and 1. This formula is very useful in our futures video. In the next slide, I will derive this formula. To make it better visualize, we replace z with t. Then we divide gamma t on both sides. We set t equals z. Then we set t equals z minus 1. Keep going. until t equals z minus n. Note here, we stop this process until z minus n is between 0 and 1. Then we multiply them together. The diagonal terms cancel out. I copy them here. The left hand side goes here. For right hand side, we write this term in this way to better see the pattern. Then we multiply this term on both sides. 
so they cancel out. Finally, we combine these two equations. So we got this formula. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and give a like.